Okay, I think I'm gonna start. Um, hi everyone, thank you for joining in. I see some familiar faces. I'm happy to see you guys. Um, my name is Rosa and I am part of the Telepres Telepresent Show, which is a cyber expo happening today through Saturday and it's brought to you by the Rising Thesis students from the Parsons MFA Design and Technology um, program. And so there will be, you can you guys can tune in for uh, a bunch of different workshops and artist talk throughout the next couple of days. You can check out um, the bio link um, on this account to kind of get the full schedule of um, what's happening in the next few days. A little bit about myself. Um, I do a lot of different things, um, but I am a textile artist at heart. Um, and I'm an educator and a creative business consultant. And I got my BFA degree in fashion design. And that's how I really first discover machine knitting and playing with textile. And I've the past couple of years kind of um, been running my own business and so really slowed down my art practice in that area. But I still managed to um, play a lot with learning new techniques. And what I'm really excited about today is sharing kind of all the little different tools that I accumulated throughout um, the past couple of years. And so then it's a really good show and tell for you of anyone that's interested in using, um, potentially exploring using textile as the medium for the art practice. And this will be a really good intro to the different tools. So then, you know, you can kind of figure out what you want to spend your money on. And also I'm going to be showing a quick demo um, throughout all of um, in the next hour of just how to initially start these little projects and you can also um, find a really cheap way to DIY a lot of the tools. And so um, the way I've structured the class is I've made a lot of different videos and I'm gonna kind of do like a voiceover and it's a little bit easier to manage um, so then it's easier for you guys to really see um, how to get started and of course What's really beautiful about any of these techniques is that anyone, um, you can look up um, online video and there's so much information um, out there that you can really pick a technique and specialize in it and find such a huge community support doing the same craft. And so let me, let's start with, um, there's three things I'm gonna go over today is machine knitting, um, handloom weaving and rug hooking. So those are the three components. And then if we have any extra time, I, I can kind of dive in a little bit further or answer any questions that you guys have. And so the first one I'm gonna show you guys is machine knitting. Again, it's what I really started with and fell in love with the idea of textile because when, like as a fashion designer, for example, um, most people go out and buy fabric and when I discovered the idea that you can actually create your own fabric and that I, and having that control over your design um, was really intriguing to me. And so for knitting, for example, you don't just go buy fabric, right? You are buying the yarn, you're choosing the yarn that you wanna um, knit with and then creating textile out of it. And then that becomes whatever the end product you wanna be. And so having that control, um, I thought it was really empowering as a, as a textile artist. And so um, one of the things I'm gonna quickly recommend to you, if anyone's interested in machine um, knitting, uh, Susan has a really good book. Let me just, yeah, I have a really good book. Um, if you want to get a machine and kind of like self teach yourself, they have really good instructions. Let me see, like show you a couple of pictures. Dun, dun, dun. Like I love these diagrams, <laughs> instructional diagrams. It has a lot of different creative stitches, right? And so I highly recommend like getting this book if you're really interested in learning machine knitting. So here's the book again. And another um, thing, it's kind of nerdy, I guess, but I love um, like reading manuals. And so the machine itself, uh, you can 
probably download all of them online if you just search the model number. And so like the manual itself is just like such a great starter for anyone that wants to um, understand about how the machine works, like maintenance, right? And also again, really great diagram of how to start knitting. And so anyone really can pick up this tool. Um, look at this really good. <laughs> picture of like the machine itself and so I highly recommend kind of these two things like your manual when you get a machine usually will come come with it anything that's a little bit um, like a used machine or older uh, you can definitely um, search it online but of course like, I think a lot of the machine with the different models like um, they work really similar so like, once you learn one model like you can figure out the rest and so these two are what I recommend to have. And then I'm gonna just quickly, before I go into kind of the instructions of how to, um, oops, I think my connection just went off. Sorry about that. Um, here are kind of some of the things that you can do with a knitting machine. So anything you knit is kind of stretchy, right? Like you think of your, like your t-shirt, like your sweater, right? Here's another sample. You can do like little holes and create patterns. This one I'll demo a little bit, like it's called knit weaving. And so it's kind of taking um, like hand loom weaving, that technique and combining it with like knitting. Just more, more example. Right, you can kind of see different much these are all done on different machines. Um, this was a little bit chunkier and so um, versus something like here, which is more finer and you can kind of see they are on different machines. And then something like this. I pulled this example just to show you kind of um, there's different you're ma manipulating the fabric and you're using the technique itself to create different shapes. Right, so once you've learned the foundation of the couple of techniques, you can combine and play, play along with it and really create really interesting shape, colors, and what's really wonderful about um, knitting or any textile work, it's the technique itself, I think it's quite easy to learn. It's not too difficult, right? There's always some sort of learning curve, but um, to make that art form your own is really putting your um, picking, deciding the colors, the materiality, all of that is what's going to make you taking something, a traditional technique and turning it into your own. And so I think that's a really um, beautiful about working with textile. So next up, I'm going to let me search some of the videos that I, I made so many <laughs> the past couple of days. Um, so... I think, yeah, let's start with this one. I love how the machine sounds. So I'm just showing you here how the machine works. So the carriage that goes across back and forth, it moves the needle up and down. And so that's how you can create kind of the fabric that you want. There's also a function where you can hold the needles and then you're only knitting um, selection of the needles and not all of them. All right, so that's one example. Here, let me show you um, the carriage itself, right? There's different functions you can do. A tuck, a part is when you like skipping stitches and then to create different fabric using different yarn, there's tension. So they go from zero to 10. So the higher the number, the looser the bigger the loops are and so you can play with having different tightness um, in your fabric and again it really depends on the yarn that you're using and you um, the more you play with it you you understand what setting you'll need to use depending on the yarn choice that you're using the next one i'm this is um how you would start on the the machine it's called casting on and this is called e-wrapping. 
Um, the reason why it's called e wrapping is because you're draw using the yarn. You're drawing kind of like a cursive e around the the needle, and so you're going from the right to the left into the back, and so it really does look like you are dry, uh, drawing a cursive e around each needle. And with this, like you're always kind of using um, both of your hands to control everything. Um, it, a lot of it in the beginning when you're um, learning this, it's, it's a bit awkward, but the more you practice, um, it's just muscle memory and you can go faster and like, it's like riding a bike too, like you'll just pick it up if you haven't been on the machine for a while too. And so again, um, this is called e-wrapping. This is how you would start every single fabric that you have. And you're essentially just looping the yarn that you're using around each needle. Um, and, and the motion itself looks like you're drawing a cursive E. And then next up, once you cast on, you need to put on some kind of comb to kind of hook all the stitches down. So what's really important is actually having some kind of weight as you're knitting to pull down the fabric as it knits each row. And so this cast on comb is super helpful. Um, it's a little claw that like hooks every single stitch. And then you would then set up the yarn and put it in to the carriage feeder and then I'll show it in right here. Um, you can see where the yarn goes in, in the A slot right there. And that holds in the yarn as you're knitting. And so I made a mistake right there. So this might happen if your um, carriage is a little bit too far, it kind of um, grabs under like extra yarn from um, underneath the carriage and it kind of creates a slack. Um, you can always just cut it off later and loop it, loop in the ends, but I wouldn't worry too much about it in the beginning as you're also just like testing the machine and making sure there's no broken needles um, or anything. But once you then hook the weight, again, the weight is super important. Um, I find that if there's any sort of problem with the knitting, a lot of it, you want to check the weights. Um, is everything balanced? Um, you really need kind of that extra pull. Um, of the waist to help the knitting and it's going to be a lot smoother that way. If you don't have it, you know, you can use your hand. I use my hand a lot as like an extra weight. Um, the edges sometimes as you start knitting, especially when you're knitting a uh, wider fabric, the edges are a little bit very sensitive and so I like to always um, use my hand uh, and just pull, tug on the, the edges a little bit to help the knitting. Let's see, yeah, so now I'm just showing you a different perspective and I'm going and going and knitting. Once you set up, it's really um, pretty easy. I'm now turning the tension just to show you guys. Hopefully you can kind of see it's a higher tension now. So you can see the loops are a little bit more tra translucent, right, a little bigger. to the next one now. Here, um, I'm showing you the knit weave technique. Um, I was showing you a swatch before where it's kind of a version of weaving while using the knitting machine. So the yarn, the blue yarn that I'm um, overlaying is actually not knitted into the loop. Um, so technically I can actually pull those things out. They're inlaid within each loop. And so I'm using the punch part function over here. So then it actually selects a very specific 
pattern, a, uh, a needle pattern, so then it only um, purchase out like whatever my punch card pattern is, so, like every other needle. You can spell your name if you wanted to and create a pattern that way. And so this technique is called knit weaving. It's probably one of my, like, I think it's so fun to, to play with. Um, and you can, you don't have to knit weave across the whole thing. You can select section, you can stop whenever, you can switch yarn really easily. Um, and the um, the face of the fabric that you're you're looking at right now, um, usually we consider it as like the the back of the fabric. But again, like I think you can choose um, which one is the face, the right side of the fabric to use. I personally always love um, the way the back of the fabric looks, and so because it has usually a lot more texture and all of that. So that's knit weaving. Here I am showing a little bit um, the idea of you can also, I was saying that you can pull, select specific needles to not knit. And when you do that, it actually creates this line over those needles. And you can, again, manipulate the fabric however you like. Um, so I can, for example, take all those yarn and lift them later and we'll see. And the tool I'm holding is called a transfer tool. It helps me um, manipulate, takes the stitches out of the needle and then transfer them to wherever I want. Um, and it's just super helpful. It comes to like a one prong. Um, you can take three needles if you want at the same time, depending on the tool that you have. So that was <laughs> a little bit about machine knitting. Um, definitely it deserves a way longer tutorial, but again, I think I wanted this workshop to be something that you just get a really quick intro, just pique your interest, and then you can kind of dive in on your own a little bit more about um, how any of these things work. Um, if you really want to get a machine, uh, the brother model, I have a brother, um, that model, they don't make it anymore and so you can definitely find people sell them on ebay if you're lucky like um people might be um on craigslist you can find some pretty cheap sometimes but definitely um, most of these machine you can buy on ebay um they go it's all over the uh all over the place of the price like a single bet that i have can range from like 300 something dollars to even 600 dollars um a newer model would definitely cost might cost 800 um, you can also get a river bed which is like a v-bed to create different type of fabric um, that can go over a thousand dollars to have a machine like that um, but if you want kind of a newer model a new machine um, they still manufacture the brand is called silver reed um, and at school those are the machines that we have um, but I think if you are a machine knitter you are just forever a brother fan um, those machines just work so well um, the silver reed itself, like all the the machine, you can, if you know one, you can easily um, translate all the different techniques, but definitely both machine works a little different and each machine uh, brand has their own like specialty. So you kind of just have to learn kind of what are those characteristics. But if you're really interested, um, you can just DM me at NGKROSA um, and I can happy to kind of help you find a machine. Um, send over any tutorials that might be helpful for you to get started um, and then we can kind of I can kind of help you through that journey of um, becoming a machine knitter cool and so the next thing I want to talk about is um, handloom weaving funny enough I actually do a lot more weaving than knitting these days um, my machine usually just sits in the corner um, here and there I'll like play around with but I think hand, handloom weaving I, I like is super meditative for, for me. And so I'll show you kind of, this is what a handloom looks like. There's so many different versions. 
this is a smaller scale um, work. It makes um, a size like this, depending on what you're trying to do, right? This is from here, this is kind of the size. This is another one, right? And then it kind of goes up. There's so many different, again, like different sizes. Let me pull back a little bit, right? And then if you wanted to have a, you can build your own frame and then kind of make your own uh, handloom that way if you wanted to um, make a specific size. And so uh, again, like all of those tools are super easy to find online. Um, and you can definitely um, DIY your own. And so talking about kind of DIY methods, you can, if you wanted to, after this workshop, like, um, or if you just have some cardboard lying around, you can kind of make your hand loom this way, right? And so like, for example, I'll show you kind of a little bit of um, how to weave with just a cardboard hand loom that you can easily make. And so all you really need is little notches on top, right here. So I cut little notches on top, same thing on the bottom. I just number them just so for the demo purposes. And what we're gonna do is actually creating the warp thread, right? The one that are going vertical and I'm gonna loop the thread around each notch from up and down, up and down, up and down. So let me find that video for you real quick. Let's see, weaving, weaving. If you guys have any questions, you guys can um, submit them in the question box and I can answer them once I'm sh done showing you all the videos. And so here we go with weaving. And so you're taking yarn. You want something pretty strong, right? Um, I like to do the pull test where I'm just pulling the yarn a couple of times to make sure it doesn't break. Right? It's really important for the 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 yarn they're using to make the warp, the vertical section of the weaving to be really strong because that's what's really holding um, all your thread that you're gonna be weaving. And so if that breaks, you have to kind of start over again. And when you're um, wrapping your yarn, you're also kind of pulling pretty tight, right? You want something really taut. And so if your yarn breaks really easily, um, you again, you might have to um, start over because if even if you if the yarn breaks and you tie a knot like that also might not be as strong and so you're just going again up and down i'm just checking each time that i'm pulling a little bit my other hand is like holding on to the back just to be a little safe with cardboard you know it's um a little flimsy and so like if you wanted to make use this like multiple times uh, I would suggest probably maybe putting some tape over it, like packaging tape over it, and then cutting the notches. So that will last a little longer. Um, what's really important, like, is your start of your, um, when you start and how you end, you want to make sure you tie a knot. Over here, I kind of just taped over um, the yarn that I have to secure it. And you can kind of see in the back. But with kind of one of my wooden hand loom, I would tie a pretty strong knot so then it doesn't unravel again once that unravel right it loosens kind of your warp thread and that's gonna um makes your weaving a little bit harder to work with and what i'm doing here you can see kind of two colors i'm doing this specifically i mean i think it's actually kind of cool um but i'm doing this as just for the demo purposes because you learn later on that when you're weaving, you're always kind of alternating threads. And so I'm um, using kind of two colors um, so then you can see um, easier what I'm picking up and, and uh, when I'm showing it. So I'm using staples here. So again, you can use anything you want to secure it, um, whatever method would work. And you can see over here, one of my thread is a bit loose. So I'm gonna just pull it a little bit and making sure everything is tight because you want that to be really tight and secure so then you can start weaving. Next up, I'm gonna use the, you can use any straight edge for this. Um, and what you, I like to always kind of have some sort of um, bottom, a straight edge, so then to hold on my weaving so everything is really neat. 
And so what you want to do is pick up the thread every other one. So here I'm kind of picking up the, the even uh, number, so two, four, six, eight. And you can see I'm using that. So now I have a gap where then I can thread in my shuttle, which has my yarn. And so you just insert that inside that gap area. And then you have created your first row. What's important here is you don't want to pull too tight and you'll see your first one is going to be doesn't really matter, but as you build up your rows, you want to make sure that you keep your tension um, really loosey-goosey uh, because it's going to affect the edges that you have. And so as I'm inserting my shuttle with my yarn, I'm kind of creating this um, a little curve on top. And then after I pull the shuttle out, I'm using my hand to push everything down. Again, I'm picking up the even numbers now, so two, four, six, eight. Previous row, I was picking up the odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, and nine. And so this kind of creates this like interlocking and locks in all your weave. So this is the kind of curve that I'm talking about. It gives it a little bit, uh, a, you're weaving a little slack on the edges. I'm using a comb here, but again, I tend to just use my hand for everything and you can just push all your um, weaving down and make a really tight fabric that way. And so this stitch where you're alternating each row is called a tabby, tabby weave. It's the most basic um, stitch that a lot of fabric is made out of. And again, do you see how I was just pulled too hard and you can kind of see the edges um, bending in a little bit. And I think that's probably, I mean, when I started learning, I think the edges are always um, the one thing that was really hard to control. And so um, I had to be a lot more aware of um, my tension as I'm pulling. So the shuttle that you saw that I was inserting through the gap um, is really great for like large area, things that you are going to repeat a lot of times. Um, I, you can also, for smaller area, if you wanted to, you can use a darning needle, right? It's a, uh, unlike the sewing needle, which is sharp, a darning needle is a dull edge, so it doesn't puncture kind of like your thread. And they come with different sizes, so you can accommodate different um, yarn size that you have. Um, I like, I personally really like using the turning needle um, when something gets, I tend to do smaller area of work and like switching different colors. And so I usually, my method, my tool is the darning needle when I'm, I'm playing around with the weaving. But it's completely the same idea. I'm picking up kind of um, the odd number of thread and then my next row, I'm picking up the even to create the different, um, the tabby weave. And you can also play around with the, the pattern of the weave. So before we were kind of doing this alternating uh, um, every other one, right now I'm doing, I'm picking up every two. So I'm picking two, going over under two, and then pick over two to, to create a different pattern. And so that's also like a different, design area that you can play with to kind of mix and match different patterns. How you're um, threading the weave um, will make a really interesting um, textile at the end. Cool. So now I'm back to doing the traditional um, every other one. Cool. So let me see what else we have. Another technique. This is called sumac. S O U M A K. Um, it looks like when you finish, um, it looks like a chain stitch or a braid. And so essentially, what you're doing is you're taking. Before we were alternating each thread that we're going over, but here we're actually looping around 
um, going under and around each thread to create the sumac technique and it takes two rows to finish the technique and so you can see I'm kind of creating you can kind of see the diagonal um, section of the braid so again under over and then you can do the next one um, when you're ready to kind of switch the direction and start your next row um, you want to loop it around your last thread once and then you can then do the same thing but the opposite direction so pretty much let's see if i'm going to the left i'm going under and looping around my thread um to the right side and that's where i'm going and so you can kind of see the braid coming together again it takes two rows um, to, to create this technique Next up is color work, um, especially when you're using the darning needle, you might be doing smaller sections and how you want to connect those work is up to you. And so I'm going to show in this video how um, you can connect the two sections together or you can not connect them and create a hole that way. And so right now I'm not going to connect them and so it's kind of creating this hole. Right, so the three, I'm going to just continue what I've been doing. If you want to connect the, the two sections together, you can just lift up that area and then just thread your, um, your darning needle to, let's say, the thread number four. And so then that will connect your work that way. And if you didn't want to, then you can just um, keep weaving with the first three threads that you see and then that will create a hole. But again, if you want to connect, you're kind of interlocking um, those areas together. And so you have to weave also the fourth thread. I think you can see a little bit better here. Yeah. Cool. I know this is like a lot of information, but um, we'll be posting this video on our Insta TV afterwards um, so you can revisit the video if there's specific technique that you want to learn and just play around with. And again, there's tons of videos online. Cool. So this is about kind of like color work. Next up, I'm going to show how you finish uh, a weaving. And so let's say we're done. Right. All you have to do is take out anything, the straight edge you have on the bottom, start unlooping those loops on the top that hold your weaving. Right. And then that will take your finished work off the loom that you have. And you can kind of see. If you want, you can, you know, like, uh, depending on what you want to make out of this textile, you can use a, a dowel to put it through that loop um, and then use as a hang a wall hanging. I'll show in another video how you can then, if you don't want those loops to be there, you can um, weave all of those ends in into the work itself. So I'll skip to the next video. Here, so I'm kind of showing you like off the loom, how do you finish something? You don't want any um, of those things um, showing the loops. And so again, using the darning needle, I'm gonna just thread that loop into the needle. And what I'm doing is just threading it to the back of the fabric inside one of those loops. And then it will secure that loop and you don't really have to do anything with it. If you don't, if you, if that's a bit too long, you can always trim it. And so then it just hides inside each loop. And so that's how one way you can um, finish one of your, your weaving work. Ah, I can't believe it's already 340. Okay. So I have a, a couple more videos for you. And so let me skip over to what's next. 
So let's see. I'm gonna show you. Um, I think this is a pot really you see it everywhere, like making fringe. And so I'm gonna show you um, this one. So this is just making a fringe, and it's also called a uh, raya knot. And so what you're doing is. Oh, this might be, this is a better video. Sorry, guys. Oh, no. Let me see. Let me go back to this one. But the fringe, you pretty much just, you're looping the, the ends. And you want to pull the edges through and then just grab the legs to create the fringe. And this one, how you do it um, on the side versus... Um, the direction you're pulling is going to make the fringe direction either more dimensional or lay flat a little bit more. Cool. I wa also want to show you, this is probably um, another one about finishing your work. I tend to especially work in really small areas, so a lot of times I the back of my weaving, it's a little crazy. And so I always takes me actually sometimes it takes me a lot longer to actually finish the work um, to kind of weave in all these ends at the end. And so what I'm doing here is using, again, the jarring needle is my go-to. It's just taking the yarn and just weaving into the loops so then it holds that thread so it doesn't unravel. And so I would do that essentially for all the things that are um, hanging there. Another tool that I use is the latch tool. Uh, and that's a tool that it's the ne same needle that was actually on the knitting machine. And so it has a little latch and I'm going to use the tool to grab the yarn and then pull it through those loops. And so if I'm going to do that one, I'm going to first decide where I want that yarn to, to thread through. And then I'm going to open the latch, put that yarn over the hook and close the latch and then pull the yarn through. And so same idea as the darning needle. Um, it depends um, if I like to keep, it's helpful to keep your ends much longer. So it's easier to kind of finish the work later. Um, I will use the latch tool, the one that I'm using right here in this video, usually for something that I can't thread through the darning needle. And it's a little harder for me to um, play with and I will use a different tool for. Cool. Let's see. I think I'm going to switch over to the next um, a little bit of a punch needle. I do have like two more videos on like weaving, but I think because of time, I want to do show it a little different, a different thing. And so before I end kind of the weaving section, uh, I'll show you a little bit, just like before with my knitting, I'll show you a little bit of the work that you can do with um, the hand loom. So again, fringe, playing with different materials. Um, this is done on the smaller loom that I showed you guys. And then this is something a little bit more delicate. Um, again, it's playing with knotting, um, fringe. This is, um, this piece itself, um, the front of it just like all fringe, but I kind of play, a, uh, play around with the back of the weaving is a lot more interesting to me. And so sometimes, you know, I'll flip it over depending on my mood. And so um, this is one example of, I think you as an artist, depending on what your vision is, I think, um, you can decide which side of the fabric is the face of the, the work. Um, and then I also want to kind of show you guys talking about when I started the workshop, like a lot of it as a textile artist, all the, the technique itself is super easy to grasp, but to make it your own is really playing with the 
choosing the yarn being experimental with the material that you want to use i don't even want to say yarn because you can weave with anything right and so um, i'll give you kind of this example um, that i the prototype that i kind of did again lots of different section um, you can kind of see places where like i didn't weave with holes but this is the color work um, interlocking that i was doing and so for this specific specific piece, um, I really wanted to turn the textile that I'm using into a malleable 3D form. And so what I did, so I can actually crush this and, you know, and it'll hold the shape. And for me, part of what I had laying around to kind of prototype was using floral wire. It's a little wire and using that as my warp yarn. To hold everything together and so just switching out one element of your medium can do a lot to kind of the um, achieve the goal that you're trying to play with and again it was just something i've laid around a really good quick prototype that i did that was just testing an idea and just thinking about what i want to do i still haven't figured out how to actually finish these loops right and so again good thing is a, a prototype we'll think about it later but this is just one example of just, you know, something that's more just fabric base. And then here's something more just more sculptural base. If you guys have any, oh, I'm sorry. I think connection is probably bad on my end, um, but hopefully the video, um, it's okay. I'm gonna keep going. I'm hoping that my connection will still be, uh, will come back. So the last, technique that I'm going to show you is called punch kneading, uh, punch needle. And I'm going to show you, it's going to look like this. Oh, I'm going to comment. Okay. I think I'm back. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna, is it, can you guys hear me now? I hope so. Um, I'm gonna just continue and I'm really, again, hoping that you can hear me and at least I'm hoping the video is being recorded on my end so you guys can rewatch later. Um, oh, I forgot to show you this one. It's probably one of my favorite pieces. Um, it's something larger and chunkier and just majority of this, I was just using my hand to weave along and this is using roving fiber and it's super fun to play with um, and it's super quick and it just creates a lot more volume and I really love uh, working with it. So next up, I'm gonna show you again, um, needle punching. And so what I'm actually doing is using a punch needle to pretty much just like the, the tool itself, punching the fabric and using yarn and it's gonna create these loops in the back. And I'll show you, and then it'll look like this. This is the back of the, again, I hesitant to say the back of the fabric, but for this specific piece, I'm using it as the back of the fabric. And this is usually the face that you're seeing when you're punching. And the tool that I'm using looks like this. Right, you can thread your yarn through the, the opening. And this is just one um, type of the, t one version of the tool that you can use. And then I'm gonna show you how to thread the one, the tool that I'm using. The one that I have is a little different. Um, it has a little slot so then I can create actually different loop size in the back of the the textile. And because I don't have 
um, I had to insert using wire to help me thread the punch needle. And that's what you're seeing I'm pulling out right now. And so then you can insert that into the needle hole. So there's a couple different frames that you can use. The one I'm showing you right now is an embroidery hoop. And you just insert the fabric and there's two components to it. The smaller um, frame holds the fabric in and then you can tighten the screw on top and that sandwiches your fabric into the loop. The hoop, sorry. <laughs> And again, just like the with weaving, you want that foundation fabric to be really tight. And so I'm adjusting as I go, making sure that the fabric is very tight and holding onto it. And you're just kind of testing it. It will like kind of feels like a, it will sound like a drum, I guess, if you have it really tight. And the material I'm using is called monk cloth. And it's a evenly spaced uh, weaving, woven fabric that a lot of um, rug makers would use. And it's really nice so that, because you can really see the, the fabric when you're punching. And it's super helpful. The yellow lines that you're seeing is just really for reference. So then you know when you are, um, just have a guide that you're going kind of a straight line when you're putting the fabric onto the frame, um, you're making sure that you know you're not um, stretching it diagonal diagonally or whatever it is. And so with punching, um, the f you are just inserting the needle into any of the spaces between the the fabric. And so the important thing to learn here, um, again, it's something that you have to get used to. You never want to pull your punch needle too high. Do you see that I'm only lifting like right above the fabric? If I pull too high, the tension um, is off and then actually pulls your loop um, out of the fabric. And the back of it looks like this. I'm, as I punch, I'm creating this little loop. It's a little harder to try to film and also look at the back. Um, but the punch you needle, know, this is kind of the, the function of the tool. So again, I'm barely pulling out of the, the fabric. Um, and then it's super easy. Like if I mess up, I can just undo it really easily. And when you restart again, you wanna make sure that you adjust those lines because as you're punching, you're kind of making a larger gap. And so if you don't adjust those lines, you can just use your tool to quickly, you know, pick at it and just even out the, the weave for that fabric. And then you can start again. So it's super easy to um, undo. And I when I picked this up, it was a little bit, um, it took me a, a a, a while to like get used to just like punching um, and getting used to like not pulling the the punch you know and just like wanting to see the work and then I'll show you uh, I think this video maybe here's another one um, you want to be when you're weaving oh sorry ah not weaving <laughs> when you're um, needle punching you want to make sure you are turning either your frame or your needle to the direction that you're you're punching. And so I'm going again. I wish I can fast forward these videos for you because I know we're running a little bit out of time. But all you have to remember with punch needle, don't lift the needle too high just as it comes out of the fabric, you can move on to the, the next stitch. So 
So I'm ready to do the next row. I'm turning my needle to the direction that I'm going to be going. So now, if I remember correctly, I'm going to the left. <laughs> so I want to make sure my needle is facing to the left direction and then I'm punching again. And so that's a little bit about punch needle. Um, hey, so I'm not really sure. I haven't done much embroidery, um, but I feel like it should be a very similar technique. And then I wanna just quickly show one last thing and then I have some um, samples that I wanna show you and then we'll end the workshop. Um, so just talking about learning all these different, like what's the point of learning so many different techniques? Um, and it's really, I think it's really helpful to, as you're prototyping, making anything, to be able to um, prototype quickly and so being a learning kind of just the foundation of these techniques will be really helpful um, if you want to play with different mediums um, and so for example uh, I one of my friends taught me how to do a um, it's called so uh, lace making and so the idea of it is very similar to weaving right we kind of had this cushion that she made and then we put pins around it and I am wrapping the thread around it to create kind of the foundation where I'm going to build my fabric. And so I'm looping it around. I'll show you kind of the finish setup. So that's what it looks like after I kind of um, made it around to create my, like, I guess technically in this version, like my warp yarn. And now I'm kind of using the thread. What the technique I'm using is now the weaving, the tabby weave. I'm going up and under, up and under, up and under. And so and you can see like now I'm making lace, but I'm using kind of a, a weaving technique into it. And when I'm using, kind of playing with a lot of different techniques, like when I'm weaving, I um, combine a lot of my knitting tools into my weaving practice. And so um, I like to play around and kind of collage um, all the different techniques together to kind of create something new. And so um, I find that it's really fun to kind of learn a little bit about everything. At the end of the day, it's, you know, encompassing textile design. And then one last thing here, I want to show you guys, if you wanted to draw out your pattern um, prior to, before you needle punch, um, and actually plan your work. There's definitely pens that you can buy where it's, I think, water soluble. So you can draw your pattern there. Um, and then the other tip, um, it's just water and you can kind of just erase if you wanted to. Um, and there are like um, other pens where once you steam the fabric, the coloration would disappear. And so those are really useful tools um, if you wanted to um, design your pattern um, beforehand and so um, I'm gonna just quickly show I'm running out of time um, talking about just DIY like if you wanted to make something bigger right like versus the embroidery group which is like so much smaller right you can just use a you can kind of stretch your own frame like a painter right kind of dip, um, build your own frame and you can staple um, your monk cloth on it and just stretch it really tight and then you can kind of start punching really easily hey hi everyone that's joining um, and then um, but one of my favorite I think tool for needle punching is called Q-snap and so you're putting the fabric and you're just snapping into it and what I really love about this is you can adjust by just pulling and as you're as I'm making the work and putting more yarn onto the fabric it sometimes um, the fabric itself loosens up and so I like to then use this to just you know you can quickly snap it off and just readjust and make your fabric a little tighter just by kind of twisting it and so this tool I really like it comes with like four um, it comes with different sizes also that's really nice
Um, let me show you, I think this is probably the last example that I'll show you. And so you can really, again, play with um, different form and you can play with, you know, playing with back and the front of the fabric, you know, simultaneously to create different dimension, whatever you want. Great. I'm waiting, I'm waiting to like finish this piece. Um, it takes, again, like I think um, finishing a piece takes so much longer sometimes or the same time as like actually creating the work. And so a lot of time, this is very slow work, um, which is also another reason why I really love textile. Um, I think that's all the time I have today. I'm sorry if my connection um, was really bad. I'm hoping at least the video recording will capture everything and you can watch it then. Um, and hi to everyone that's kind of just joined in the past couple of minutes. Um, the video, the whole workshop will be on, um, on our IGTV and eventually on our website at mfadt.space. And I, that's it for now. And um, if you have any questions, you can DM me on my account at ngkrosa. Um, and I'm happy to um, go over any new tools, um, any um, website, and any, any el anything else that you have um, questions about. And so thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you later. Okay, bye.